What if I told you you could host a professional developer portfolio for free forever? No hosting bills, no servers. This is all built on GitHub pages. This is perfect for things like portfolios, project documentation, and it's actually GitHub's built-in hosting service for any static websites. So if you're interested to learn how to set one up, it's super easy. I'll walk you through all the steps. Let's go ahead and dive on in. Just as a note, this is the same service I use for my coding resources that holds all of my projects. So if you haven't checked it out, just got a fresh coat of paint on here, pretty sleek. So make sure you do that. Otherwise, let's go ahead and hop on into the video. So to create our GitHub pages, we're actually going to need to create a new repository. You can also add this to an existing repository, but I'll show you the two best ways to create one. Create a new repository, go to the top right. We have a little plus button here. You need to be signed into GitHub. If you don't have a GitHub account, today is the day to create one completely free and we'll create a new repository. Now, when it comes to naming the repository, we actually have a couple options. And I didn't know about this first one until down the line. So just like with our GitHub profile readme, we can actually just name it the exact same as our username. So in my case, NDC Swift, and then do .github. Dot io. The .github.io is the default domain name for any GitHub pages. Now, if you want a custom domain name, and that's what I ended up doing for mine, it's just under the Swift projects repo. This is how it would look depending on the domain name. So if we wanted it to instead be like, you know, my portfolio, it's like creating a repository for a different project and you can have unlimited project sites, one for every single repository that you own if you wanted. That might be a bit much. If you do it this way, this is kind of a unique case where you only get one of these. It's one single user or organizational site per GitHub account and uses that specific repository name. We're going to talk about the configurations, public versus private. I would typically leave this as public. So any user organizational pages must be public. So if you use the one with your GitHub account name, GitHub pages will not serve from a private repo unless you're on GitHub Pro, Team, or Enterprise. And even then, it's a bit of a different setup. The project pages, so these are the custom repo names. They can be private, but it's not what you want for your personal portfolio. So make it public from creation. The readme. Totally optional, doesn't really affect the GitHub pages at all, only useful to explain what this is. So if you want to say this is my portfolio developed by GitHub pages, feel free to do so. For the Git ignore, it doesn't really matter for GitHub pages static sites unless you're committing build artifacts or simple HTML CSS portfolio, totally not needed. If you are using a framework like React, Next, whatever, then a git ignore is essential to ignore any node modules, etc. Plain HTML, CSS, totally fine to skip it. For license, you totally don't need one. None is basically legally all rights reserved. MIT is people can reuse it freely. For most dev portfolios, people typically leave it unlicensed. Otherwise, let's go ahead and create that repository. So as I mentioned, this is a special one that's already a little bit primed for GitHub pages and the URL is going to be nice and clean. Now you may choose to use uh, you know, Visual Studio Code to make your HTML, CSS and kind of build that website. From there, you can upload those existing files. I'm keeping it basic today. We're not going to dive too much into the HTML and CSS. I'm just going to create some files on GitHub themselves by creating a new project. So from here, I'm going to create my index.html. And we can paste our contents here. I'm just going to quickly create the most bare bones, basic HTML. And there we go. Super duper basic. If you want to pause the video to copy or just generate your own HTML code, feel free to do so. Let's say I'm happy with this website, uh, you know, amazing, great. And I want to see it on the pages. Let's go ahead and commit. We'll commit our changes. And this is why I also like using GitHub pages. It follows a similar flow of typical get creation. But where's our website? If I click on this, it's just an HTML file. What gives? Well, we actually need to go to our settings first. Once you're on the settings of your project, you'll want to go to the pages tab. It's under the code and automation. And we can see here, build and deployment. We want to deploy from a branch. There is GitHub actions for customizing. I would stay away from that unless you're pretty advanced. Otherwise we have our main. We want to be looking at the root. If we go into docs, we will probably be looking at Jekyll and you'll probably get some weird errors. If you do have another branch, you can of course select it from here. You might just need to give it a couple quick refreshes after you've created that HTML, but automatically we can see that our site is live at, and there we go. We even see last deployed by who, and we actually just visit the site. And there we go, hello world. This is my first GitHub pages site. Super, super duper basic. If you wanted to add other files, so you had to quickly do that. 
So we have our index to get out there, upload or create a new file. I'm just going to create a CSS one. I like to keep my CSSs in a separate folder. So what I'm going to do is CSS, then the forward slash to kind of create that subdirectory. And we'll do the style.css. Again, it's going to take two seconds to make some CSS. Today's not so much about writing the code, but more of the process of setting up your website. Let's go ahead and commit those changes. Now, when you are creating a website for the first time or you're committing those different changes, it usually takes about three minutes. If GitHub is in prime time, there's a lot of traffic going to and forth. I've had it take like 10 to 20 minutes sometimes, but hey, it's a free hosting service. Can't complain too much. I'm also just going to update the HTML while we're here because we want to be able to use that CSS. So if you want to edit it, make sure you go click on this edit the file. If you try to edit here, it'd be like, what are you doing? It's code only. And I just updated this really quickly. Just as a note, I'm just referencing my CSS and I'm just saying it's in the CSS folder. And then we had given it the name of style.css. Let's go ahead and commit those changes. If you are kind of testing and you want to see those changes in real time, I would suggest having those local HTML files or using Visual Studio Code in order to kind of just run it from your own machine. When it's all done, sync and upload it to GitHub. I refreshed it, last deployed now. Let's go ahead and refresh our page. There you go, Jane Doe, how's she doing? <laughs> so very, very, very basic. If I were to give this link to a friend, they can access it. So I just have the simulator from Xcode pulled up here and I'm just gonna paste in the URL. And there we go, we can see our website here, which brings me to another point. You can formulate this website with a lot of different tools. You can even make it mobile friendly within the CSS. Just as a note, if you do have the folder as docs, you will probably get an error. When you're using docs, you're telling GitHub pages, I'm using the Jekyll service. So if you had the docs folder here and not using the root, it may be throwing some errors and potentially not refreshing. You can always check your errors within the unread notifications. Now, I don't have a custom domain for my demo, but here's a little bit of how it looks like. You can see here we have the custom domain. There's even a nice little article about configuring the custom domain. Essentially, you'd want to purchase one on a domain hosting website. There's hundreds of them like godaddy.com and you would enter the custom domain name. Upon entering the custom domain name, it creates a C name file. And for that C name, we would just be pushing through the username.github.io. Always make sure that enforce HTTP Yes, is turned on. Otherwise, you will run into tons of issues. Let's discuss some limitations and then we'll talk about a little bit more customization you can do on your website. So these websites are static only. There's no database or backend and there's a one gigabyte repo limit with a hundred gigabytes bandwidth. But it's pretty cool. You can push code, refresh and have it live within minutes. On the feature side itself, there's actually quite a lot you can do with the GitHub pages because it is using HTML and CSS. You can even use JavaScript for any custom scripts where you might want to have some animations, have things appear, etc, etc. You can even choose to, as I've added here, use Google Fonts. So let's say I want to use the Fonts API and I want to have the Poppins. We can go ahead and paste that on in as well as we can include that script for things like Font Awesome. If you do this, you'd of course also need to to update the CSS. So for the font family, let's change this to be that Poppins that we added. And we want to use that sans serif. I'd also recommend making your CSS mobile friendly so you can add use the app media for the max width and handle things accordingly there. If you are you know looking to get hired or you know looking for recruiters, there's so many recruiters that use mobile, so make sure it is mobile friendly. It's also kind of like a noob check in my opinion. <laughs> this day and age, we, we should definitely be making all our websites as mobile friendly as possible. If you're someone who's like, man, I don't know HTML, I don't want to write HTML. You can totally use AI services to kind of do a lot of the boilerplate code, even chat with Copilot if you really want, you know. So you can ask them, make me a template CSS and HTML for a dev portfolio. And now it's kind of coding and giving us some boilerplate and some basic HTML and CSS that we want to use. If you do you enjoy using things like Copilot, they'll be able to customize them for you as well. Today is more about setting up that profile and you can do whatever you'd like to afterwards. So at this point, you have a clean landing page, you know, some basic HTML, whether or not you use some AI to help you out there, 
and have those external fonts and icons, uh, even JavaScript. And by using the media, you can even have the responsive mobile layout. And this will be live on whatever your username is, .github.io. Again, you can feel free to add that custom domain if you do have one for a little bit more of a polish. Then you just have all the files on GitHub for that nice, easy Git flow. I would typically use these pages as like a developer portfolio if you do want to expand upon your readme or if you do have any projects that you really want to go in depth with because the readme is kind of nice and, and basic but this can be a really nice thing to also share with people so if you wanted to even have like i have here an image gallery of my app in action links things about it uh, the roles that you may have had with a website you can typically go a lot more in depth there and uh, yeah, you can use it as a, a, a journal, you can use it as a blog, or just whatever you want. It's your website. <laughs> so that's all for today. Have fun building your website on GitHub pages. Otherwise, dream big, code bigger. We'll see you in the next one.